Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on mediated culture and conjunction. This lecture is part of your paper on media, culture and society. This lecture will introduce you the to the process of conjunction that is facilitated through the interaction between culture and media. On the one hand, the mediation of culture through technologies of mass communication shapes our conjunction practices, whereas on the other hand, our consuming habits determines the demand and supply of the products, be it in terms of commodities, images, art, cinema, sound, and several other audiovisual materials. In this lecture, you will learn the concepts of mediated culture and the role of traditional and new media in shaping cultural trends in the society. You will learn the processes of mediation and conjunction through diverse media, mass media. The conjunction behavior of a particular society doesn't depend upon a single factor, but is being influenced by a variety of factors. There are several global and local factors which influence an individual and group approach to cultural conjunction. This lecture will help in explaining and um, clarifying the various aspects of how the media is mediating and regulating the existing culture. An examination is made in, in, into its role which shows that uh, its influence is so deep and pervasive that there is even a sense of commodity fetishism. In commonsensical terms, the intermediary role and function of media while engaging with culture and society can be roughly understood as mediation. Media attempts to provide a justification to the expectations and aspirations of the masses. It creates uh, a feeling of greater accountability and increased sense of consciousness about public perception. Mediation accelerates the process of identification among the consumers with certain visuals, images, texts, and even products, which partly influences and explains their conjunction behavior and the conjunction pattern. This is so because media is not the sole determining factor of conjunction. There can be several other factors which might make us understand the practice of conjunction. What media does is select a few cultural elements from the society and codes it in a particular way as to persuade the audience to purchase a community and even provides justification and a sense of satisfaction to the consumption behavior. For example, choice of a consumer gets a justification when they see the specific community gets highlighted, like a consumer of Raymond cloth, for instance, gets justification of his choice when he says the advertisement of Raymond, a complete man. There's nothing to advertise Raymond here, by the way. Here it doesn't imply merely the consumption of cloth, but a particular brand of cloth signifying glass position. It also is a way conforms to the prevailing notions of masculinity or gender norms besides class, where the consumption takes place with an aim to satisfy the condition of one becoming a complete man, or implying the conjunction of this particular brand of cloth completes you in all sense of masculine norms. The real conflict is how certain qualities are associated with man, strong, less emotional and muscular, are mediated and pacified through the act of conjunction. One would be able to understand this example in a better manner if one is aware of examining the process of conjunction from different perspectives. Now let's try to understand consumption from different perspectives. Our choice as a consumer is one of the one of the primary means through which we define ourselves and exert influence over the market. Have you ever thought uh, why do we consume? How do we get involved in the process of consumption? What do we want to establish through consumption? Well, the answer to these questions lies in understanding conjunction through three perspectives. First, it needs to be seen as an outcome of production. From an economic perspective, we produce to consume. Secondly, we get drawn into the culture of conjunction through manipulation of science done by the media. 
third we consume to define our class position and to conform to other societal norms. However, these three perspectives need not be seen as a separate watertight compartments. Rather, our jobs and practices can be understood as an amalgamation of these three perspectives. Let's talk about production of consumption, a culture, economy, society interlinked case. From a classical economic perspective, one needs to understand the process of consumption through expansion and production. According to this perspective, the major objective of all production is to maximize one's satisfaction by purchasing goods for consumption. For our understanding, we can extend the meaning of production by not confining it to production of things or commodities, but also a wide range of images, visuals, arts and artifacts. All these can be included as different forms of material culture, which can be labeled as consumer or symbolic goods and as such become sites for purchase and consumption. This eventually results in the growth of leisure and conspicuous consumption. It also confers to each individual a sense of egalitarianism that is equal opportunity to participate in the process of consumption. Apart from prevailing notion of equality in the consumption process, it gives us a feeling of individual freedom. That is uh, the freedom to choose from among a variety of products to consume. Theodore Adorno and uh, Max uh, uh, Kormheimer 1972 argued that the sphere of production and consumption are regulated by the same commodity logic and instrumental rationality. The art and culture of the society gets commodified and the reception of such culture depends upon its exchange value. It is in this sense that the quality associated with cultural tradition gets quantified. For example, we find uh, several Khadi outlets in the urban areas which sells the idea of indigenous product, something which is natural, which is organic and most importantly something which is Indian. The quality of being Indian becomes much more saleable and desirable today. Therefore, it would be wrong to assume that exchange value solely determines the use value of cultural goods. A donor points out that consumer goods have an intrinsic and uh, inherent secondary use value which depends upon their cultural associations. For example, if we examine the product uh, advertisements, they make the mundane consumer goods like washing powder, shampoo, toothbrush, bathing soaps, perfumes, car, dishwashers. All these appear to be more desirable and appealing by attaching images and expressions of fulfillment, smart choices, beauty, advanced thinking, romance, desire and scientific progress. Another way of understanding the process of consumption is through the viewpoint that media manipulates and seduces the population through its representations and uh, compels or rather persuades them to be a part of consumer culture. The 20th century neo-Marxists claim that with the growth of markets and expansion of production of consumer goods, the population is more or less pulled towards a controlled and manipulated consumption, especially facilitated through media advertisements. One can take uh, the argument further of how advertisements facilitate the process of consumption from the perspective of uh, semiology, that is the study of science. According to Jean Baudrillard in 1970, consumption needs to be seen as active manipulation of science. The signifier becomes more powerful and free when it becomes associated with multiple objects through different associative relations. Baudrillard's semiological understanding of commodity logic marks a shift from Marxian materialist understanding of consumption to a cultural analysis of consumption. He talks about cultural reproduction of images involving a continuous process of reduplication of images and signs that blurs the distinction between image and reality. 
he believed that uh, as the as the consumer society becomes cultural it has a direct bearing on the social life and social relationships the social life becomes less structured and is no longer under the direct control of the stable societal norms the authenticity and stable meaning is lost due to the overproduction of science and images Jameson points out that such a situation of uh, saturation of science and images leads to the extinction of the social life. Consequently, there is predominance of a cultural life. This, he believed, will efface the distinction between high culture and mass culture. For example, the original painting of Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci has been copied and reproduced in several forms to such an extent that the original painting has lost it almost its importance. Acquiring the original painting would have been an issue of class position or distinction, but the easy availability of the replica of the, of the painting, uh, the same painting, makes it um, readily accessible to all sections of the society. The population becomes attached to an aestheticization of reality and do not bother to know whether this is an original or a duplicate of the painting. So friends, so far we have discussed how the production of consumption has altered the social life and how media weaves the discourses of consumption around us. Now the question arises, has it really succeeded in doing so? Is it that easy to do away with the social and indulge in cultural consumption? Such questions can be answered if we examine the actual practices and experiences of consumption. The actual process of consumption would reveal the complex and different responses of the audience of the population in terms of their use of cultural and consumer goods. The everyday practice of consumption reveals the transitions through which goods and commodities undergo in the act of consumption itself. There are certain goods and commodities which might not uh, be necessary for us but becomes a part of our everyday consumption as we feel need to purchase it. The distinction between needs and wants gets blurred in this process. There is a need to differentiate between consumer durables that is the goods which uh, we use in maintenance and leisure like washing machines refrigerator vehicles and consumer non-durables like food items, clothes and other such uh, perishable commodities. Over a period of time, we keep on sifting the amount of money we spend on these two types of commodities. At times, even the consumer non-durables acquire the status of durable goods. For example, a bottle of expensive French wine is identified as non-durable but it can live longer and continues to enjoy prestige. It might not be consumed actually, but symbolically. The symbolic consumption takes place when someone gauges at it, desires it to consume it, or wants to exhibit and talk about it. But actually, Featherstone argues that this is the doubly symbolic aspect of the commodities. First, the symbolic aspect is represented through design and images and secondly, it is used to emphasize differences in lifestyles and social relationships. There can also be cases where a commodity loses its commodity status. For example, gifts and uh, inherited objects become decommodified and priceless as the recipient doesn't want to sell these objects due to memories associated with them. This symbolizes an intense personal relationship that an individual shares with the object, which he or she has received as gifts. All these transactions in the status of the goods and commodities denote the social life of things. It implies that commodities, like human beings, have also social lives. Now let us talk about media, cultural practices and consumption in India. According to uh, an expert, Arjun Apadurai in 1986, consumption is a social act that is relational active, it cannot be considered to be a private activity in the sense that goods are meant for public consumption and display. Consumption is a process of communication 
which is not a passive one. It tends to send a social message which is actively received by the audience. The demand for a certain, certain product also implies an active participation of the consumers. Consumption, like demand, represents an aspect of political economy of societies. Apart from the political economy perspective, there is a need to understand how the cultural practices tend to regulate the consumption pattern among certain communities. For example, um, Alfred Jell in 1986 did a study on consumption pattern among the Murya Gonds, a tribal group in central India, and found a peculiar dilemma of consumption and desire in this community. Despite the rapid changes in the socio-economic condition among the Murya Gonds, um, which has made them uh, capable of acquiring wealth and purchasing goods, their belief in economic egalitarianism has resulted in a simplistic pattern of consumption. Their main expenditure revolves around traditionally accepted commodities such as brass pots, art and artifacts related to their ethnic identity. This should not mean there is availability of limited goods which makes their consumption quite little. Certainly not. It is their collective regulation of demand supported by their group identity, economic equality, homogeneity and sociality. In the late 90s, India witnessed the process of globalization which brought about radical transformation of mediascape in the country. The opening up of the domestic market emphasis on import and less state dominance, all these were accompanied with exchange of information and entertainment in the form of music, art, image, cinema, and so on. One significant step has been the growth of private television channels showing foreign programs, news and information, uh, and infotainment on Indian television. The global expansion of media technologies has primarily involved in providing information throughout the world, including India. More particularly in India, the spurt of technological advancement has expanded the reach of different forms of media, which influences and in a way get influenced by the culture. There is a kind of negotiation that takes place in the interaction between culture and media. One should not perceive that media solely affects the culture or vice versa, rather they intersect and engage with each other at various levels. The most influential medium in cultural intersections are the older cinematic and print forms. The newer interactive digital television and technological advancement in mobile and internet. The technological enrichment of the common man has made possible the interaction between local and global culture. For example, celebration of the Valentine's Day or the Father's Day or Mother's Day, once considered to be a Western culture, has become a more token of expression confined to specific regions in urban India. The media makes the celebration more identifiable and acceptable by incorporating local visual elements in its representation. In a similar manner, there has been a dissemination of local cultural elements into the global media. Some positive views on globalization's influence is the pace which a medium is able to catch up with the global media growth. The technological enrichment of the, of the common man has made an attempt to bridge the gap between the local and the global. A research study by venture capital uh, firm Kleiner Perkins Glowfield Byers says, dominance of mobile phones is growing as the medium of choice in India and it has 355 million internet users in 2016. Well, for any technology in the recent times, this kind of growth is fundamental. In many countries, including India, the number of cellular or mobile phones has taken enormous growth. The mobile screen has emerged as the third screen in the lives of consumers today after the television and the personal computer screen. The biggest and most visible impact of the wireless boom is seen on the media industry. Convergence between wireless and other media providing new sources of data traffic, lucrative business models, user participation, etc. 
it has become an impact in the cultural realm as well. Culture is transforming in a very rapid manner where access of technologies is possible. The Indian form of capitalist realism is firstly learned by Indian commercial cinema where glamour, fashion and emotions center around the lifestyle of the male and female protagonists. Viewers are frequently confused, perplexed, in fact frustrated by Hindi films because they disrupt their systems of expectation. But they get impression of vibrant background and so-called materialistic lifestyle of the character. So earlier the culture of visual landscape of India had been dominated by Indian films. But with the growing expansion of television and technologies like video recordings, DVDs, CD players have also gradually occupied the visual cultural landscape and thereby expanded the dominance of Indian cinema by extending the reach of cinematic forms to the smaller towns and poorer citizens of India. There has not been only an expansion of the medium but also diversity in the media content. Media diversity implies that the citizens must have access to a wide variety of information and different opinion and ideas uh, from different sources. There must be a variety of cultural aspects and expressions. The uniformity in the media has the ability of strengthening the dominant positions and it has the ability to weaken the other perspectives and alternative uh, opinions. The concept of diversity in India is very important since India has one of the most diverse societies of the world. It is people from all the major religions of the world. There is a need of the pursuing equality in the diverse society. There are the questions of uh, accommodating religious diversity, dealing with linguistic diversity, giving special rights to tribal communities um, along with dealing with the issues of asymmetric and multi-level federalism. Global communication revolution creates an astonishing thirst for a variety of information, opinion and news directed towards the customized audiences. The inner thrust of these uh, news magazines appears to be providing amalgamation of uh, gossip, politics, cinema, sports and investigative journalism within the same purview. Also, there is a multiplication of specialized magazines directed towards so special tests, special interest groups and fashions for their customized readers. These magazines also provide the expression of an urban lifestyle. Similarly, television programs have their influence on the society too. At present, urban Indian children are growing up in homes where television tells most of the stories. Before they go to school, which is the first time that they encounter the larger culture, they are integrated into the television view of the world. This is not the view of the parents, communities, schools or even countries, neither the view of the creative people with something to tell, rather it is the view of the handful of conglomerates with something to sell. At that time, children became consumer. In the category of children, marketeers see the best potential consumer in that segment. Whether it's utterly, butterly delicious amul or Jewish and chocolate advertisements, the same case of seducing the consumers is found in the other segments also. The viewers are mesmerized by the audiovisual effects of the advertisements. Moreover, they are being uh, targeted most uh, not merely as consumers of goods but as desirers and active buyers of goods. The homogeneity of advertisement appeals to the television watchers who may be located in diverse places. Perhaps uh, these homogenized images are working because the, the, the market dominated by electronic media has created a new narrative of conception. So friends, uh, to conclude this lecture, we understood uh, that uh, the conjunction is not only an economic act but also a socio-cultural accomplishment. The practice of conjunction is located in the cultural life world of an individual. The dominance of culture gets reinforced when it is adopted by the media to convey the message of conjunction.
through repeated representation of a mediated culture, the discourse of consumption determines the act of consumption. Basic instinct of a person is to emulate, and so it is aptly said that what we see and what we hear is what we try to emulate. We also discussed that this equally holds true in, in case of consumption of goods and commodities. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. For more details, please uh, refer to the e-text of this lecture and attempt all the questions given at the end. For further study, please go through the extended reading list that is given in your e-text. Thank you very much.